Welcome, my name is Mark Abadi and this is Mark's Minutes on Enlightenment. I just want to talk to you about this concept of enlightenment. It's so funny. People are constantly searching, searching, searching. I want enlightenment, I want enlightenment. And now you've got the new age understanding that is, you can't search for it because you're already it. You just don't know it. And then people sit back and go, eh, I'm already enlightened. Fine, great, great. But why don't, why don't I know it then? And then the question comes is, well, who is the I to know? And then you've got uh, Tony Parsons and Leo Hartong. I recommend Leo Hartong's book, Awakening to the Dream. Very cool cat. It's a little interesting because it takes you in this paradoxical journey around yourself back to there is actually no answer. Because there aren't any answers. Because for there to be an answer, you'd have to pick a yin or a yang. And if you were to pick a yin or a yang, you're still in the duality not the singularity. It's all about the singularity. So, a little bit more on enlightenment. Um, reminds me of a story. The disciple is uh, on one side of the river and the master is on the other. And he shouts over to the master, Master! Master! How do I get to the other side? And the master looks at him and shouts back, you are on the other side. Get it? The point is, it's all about being already there. Now, that's very good. That's fair enough. There's another story, which uh, there, was a, there was a knight, or a, an explorer. It wasn't a knight. He was an explorer. And he was riding on a stallion. And he was riding through the jungle. He's going to explore. He's going to explore. He wants to find enlightenment. Find his true self. However, they, they stumble into some quicksand, and the horse is, is, is sinking down to the quicksand. He can't do anything, he struggles, and he realizes, struggling in quicksand, no, no. So he tries to look, shouts for help, there's no one around. He tries to grab something, can't reach anything. Can't reach anything. Now, this is akin to everyone's journey. This is where all humans are. We're all stuck in quicksand, sinking to our death. That's where we are. There's no one around, because we're the only ones there. Sinking, sinking. Now, getting out of the quicksand, escaping the quicksand, in this analogy, is akin to the guy, final method, final resort, grabbing his own ponytail and trying to pull himself out of the quicksand with his own ponytail. Now, you can try doing that, all right? And let me know if you do it. Because, hey, then you're the avatar. Look up avatar on Google if you don't know what it means. So the point is, you can't pull yourself out of the quicksand with your own ponytail. You've just got nothing to levy yourself against. And that's the same analogy for enlightenment. You can't just pull yourself out of it with, a, with your ponytail. Now, there are very few people, one in a trillion, who might be able to, one in a billion probably, who might be able to, fine. But for the rest of us, we're just normal people. We need help. We need someone to throw us a rope and say, hey, grab the rope. And we go, what rope? Oh, right. And grab the rope. That is the job of the master. The master will throw you the rope. Now, by master, I mean a, a person who has realized their enlightenment, but at the same time has somehow an ability to throw ropes. So not only have somehow they pulled themselves out of the quicksand, whether there was a rope next to them or whether somehow they whatever, levitated out, who knows. The point is, the master is the person who not only has pulled themselves out of the quicksand, but can help others to pull themselves out as well. A master is not just an enlightened person. They're just an enlightened person. So what, they've got out of the quicksand. If you don't know how to help others, you're not a master. Yeah? So all these people, these, the, these groups around the world, from the transcendental meditators, unfortunately Marashi's dead, who did he leave enlightened? Was he even enlightened? No. He didn't leave anyone enlightened. So what's the point of this whole group? What's the point of multi-billion pound group? Oh yes, we're TM, Transcendental Meditators. Yes, we transcend. Do you? So who's transcended? Show me someone who's transcended. Bring them. Let's see. Let's hear them. Let's talk to them. No, because they haven't. All they've done is they've meditated and they've aligned their ego. Now I distinguish two types of enlightenment. I distinguish enlightenment of the ego which is the Zen master. You become the beacon of peace, nothing can harm you, nothing riles you, you are joy and love. Mm. Mm. 
You talk like this, perhaps, and speak words of wisdom. But for all intents and purposes, when that human being dies, that's it, they're gone, they're dead. There is another form of enlightenment, which is a transcendence, which doesn't happen to the ego or the personality, it happens beyond. And in that beyond space, is not Mark doesn't ever go there. Or you, you never go there. The thing that's behind us, that's watching, that we're not yet awake to, that goes there. That reconnects with its source behind us. Our personalities are just the front end of it, right here. The front vehicle, the eye that we're looking through. That's it, right here. The question is, can you step back and look beyond yourself? If you're interested in exploring this, there are mechanisms. The religions, check out my uh, discussion on religions. The religions have good maps, like the Tree of Life in the, in the Kabbalah system of Judaism, or the Sufism. All this spiritual aspect of religion, they have good maps, just they get a bit confused. They've all lost the vehicles. It's all very well having a map of Australia and going, wow, look at the detail. And you have photos of everyone. Wow, it looks so great. It looks wonderful. Hey, when I get there, I know just what to do. That's fine. But if you haven't got a plane to get there, how the hell are you going to get there? You need the vehicle. Judaism, they call that Merkaba. 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 The chariot. We can help connect you to a chariot. And the great thing about this work, this meditation practice I do, the great thing is that you don't have to believe anything. Nothing. In fact, all your beliefs are completely useless and they have to be released. Even the belief that you're going somewhere or the belief that this person is interesting, whatever. Any belief you have has to go. That doesn't mean you suddenly give away all your worldly positions, possessions and go and live on top of a mountain in a cave. I'm talking about right here inside the Maya, the illusion, as the Indians call it, as the Vedics call it. Inside the Maya, the veil pulled down over your eyes. Inside here, like the Matrix. You seen the film The Matrix? It's exactly like that, except without the big baddie on the other side. So, if you're an explorer, get in touch. We'll see if we can help you explore further down the rabbit hole. Really explore. Not just theorize. Actually go there. That's the key. If you ain't actually going there, then it's all in your head. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning.